Hello, this is Past Paper Guy. I'm going to be solving this AQA AS physics paper. It's the specimen paper from 2014, the second half, so it's paper two. Um, as with the other papers, I suggest very strongly that you follow the link below and download the paper yourself and give it a go before watching this video. And once you've given it a go, you'll be able to learn a lot more from this video. Okay, so we'll start with question one then. The student has a diffraction grating that is marked 3.5 times 10 to the 3 lines per meter. Calculate the percentage uncertainty in the number of lines per meter suggested by this marking. Now this question is one of those ones where you need to learn um, some of the rules that AQA have decided on for percentage uncertainties. So we have 3.5 times 10 to the 3. Now the way AQA have decided is that the uncertainty in this is the smallest decimal place there, so it's going to be plus or minus 0.1. Now this is a little bit confusing to some students because, quite rightly, it's different to what um, you learn in GCSE. In GCSE you would learn that it would be um, as low as 3.45 and as high as 3.55 or 3.5. Five, four, nine, 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 reoccurring like that. So this is different, but you have to learn the way that AQA want it, and this is the way they want it. So we do work this value out as a percentage of that value. So we need to do 0 0.1 divided by 3.5, the times 10 to the 3's cancel. So here goes. 0 0.1 divided by 3.5 and that is um, then your ratio. You need to change that into a percentage, so you times by 100 to change that into a percentage, which gives you 2.857, so that is 2.9% to 2SF and it's usually a good idea to quote all of your percentage uncertainties to two significant figures. So that's the percentage uncertainty there. De right, determine the grating spacing. Well, if it's this many lines per meter, then you take one meter and you divide by that many lines to find out how much they, space they've each got. So we take one, we divide by, that's one meter, we divide by the number of lines, so that's 3,500 get 1 divided by 3,500, and that gives us that much space for each one. It rather annoyingly wants it in millimetres, so just be careful of the units here. That's in metres, so that's 0.002857 metres, which is 0.28, uh, we want that um, to significant figures, don't we, so 0.29 millimeters to 2SF. Okay, um, this particular question they have demanded that this is to two significant figures, which you should have given it to because that's to two significant figures, um, and there was a mark for the significant figures here even though it hasn't actually said so in the question, which is a bit unusual. I think in the real paper they will this is just a specimen paper, remember. I think in the real paper they will ask you um, to make sure that you include your answer to the correct number of significant figures. State the absolute uncertainty in the value of the spacing then. Well, if this is the percentage uncertainty and that's the value, then we need to find out what this percentage of that value is. So we do um, this number here, which is 0. 0.002857. We're going to times by the percentage, which is um, this number here, 2.857 divided by 100 to, to make that into a percentage again. So we're going to times by 2.857 divide by 100 gives us. 8.16285, etc. 
times 10 to the minus 6. So that's the plus or minus is the absolute uncertainty. So the absolute uncertainty we need to round to get to the same number of decimal places as that. So we're going to have, let's write it all out in uh, meters to start with. So we're going to have 0 0.0000 to 9 meters and we're going to have plus or minus 0 0.0000018 one six dot 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 meters. So we need to round it to this one here and whenever you're dealing with uncertainties you always have to round up because you can never reduce the uncertainty. So it's got to be plus or minus 0 0.0001 meter which is plus or minus 0.01 millimeter. So we have now with questions like that you just have to remember AQA's rules and apply them. They can be a little bit arcane sometimes. Right, now this question did actually say state the absolute uncertainty value of the spacings. So according to that keyword you should just be able to write down the answer. However, for the life of me I can't figure out how you can do that without doing a simple calculation. So that's why I've done a calculation there. Sometimes specimen papers have little bits on that don't quite make sense. Um, I think that's one of them. Right, question 1.4. The student sets up the apparatus shown to confirm the value marked on the diffraction grating. So he's setting up a sample diffraction grating experiment and he's got some fringes here um, and he's put a ruler by them. Use figure 2 to determine the spacing between two adjacent maxima in the interference pattern. Okay, so what we do here is we take our measurement over as many fringes as we possibly can. So draw a line on the middle of this one to there, and then on the middle of this one to there. And then you need to count up how many fringes it is. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So it's 25 gaps. Remember to count the gaps, not the lines. And then we need to figure out what these numbers are here. So I would say that is 6 millimeters. And that is... Um, 136 millimeters. So what we need to do now is go back to our pen. We have 136 minus 6, that gives us the millimeters across from there to there. Divided by 25 gaps gives us the width of each gap. So that's 130 divided by 25, which is 5.20. So 5.20 goes there. And now we need to calculate the number of lines per meter on the grating. For that we're going to use d sine theta is equal to n lambda. Now we need to know what sine theta is. Well here the laser is coming into here and the first fringe is going to be 5.2 millimeters away from the straight on beam. So if I draw here a line like that, then the first fringe, I'm going to exaggerate it quite a lot there. The first fringe there, that's theta, that will be 5.20 millimeters. That's when n is equal to 1. So we need to um, do a little bit of trigonometry and we get, hopefully you can remember that, so sine theta, so use the pen, sine theta is equal to the opposite, that's in millimeters, so just be careful, so that's 0 0.00520 divided by the um, hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse, you could work it out completely, but if that's five millimeters and that's two and a half meters, it's, um, the hypotenuse is going to be so close to two and a half meters that it's going to make no difference. So I'm just going to put 2.5 naught meters in. If you felt keen, you could work out the, the actual value of the hypotenuse using Pythagoras. You'll find that 
it won't affect that decimal place there. So that's going to be what sine theta is. D is what we're trying to find out. And uh, n is going to be 1 and lambda is going to be the wavelength which is there. So we need to put all of that into um, together. So D will equal n lambda divided by sine theta. So n is 1. Lambda is 6 to 8 times 10 to the minus 9. And then we need to divide by sine theta, which is 0 0.00520 divided by 2.5. So we'll do that on the calculator. Uh, here we go. 1 times by 628 exponent minus 9 is that divided by brackets. 0 0.00520 divided by 2.5, close brackets, is that. That is the D, which is um, 0 0.003019, etc. Now, D is the number of um, the the spacing per line, so the number of lines, we need to do 1 divided by that. So number of lines is equal to 1 divided by, I'm just going to write answer there, uh, which is 3,312, which is going to be 3,300. Now we've got to think about significant figures. That's 3, that's 3. That's 3, so I should have written a 0 there. Uh, so we can put this to 3 significant figures, 3SF. And there's no units there because it's just number of lines. Right, part 6. State and explain whether the value for the number of lines per meter obtained in part 1.5 is in agreement with the value stated on the grating. The value stated on the grating from the previous part, you'll remember, is this. So the previous answer was 3,500. Okay. Well, first of all, we need to do a simple calculation of the um, percentage difference, I think, between these two so we can figure out what's going on. So if we do 3,500, take away 3,310, and we divide that by the original value, that will give us the percentage difference times by 100 to turn into a percentage. So the difference between the two is 3,500,3310. That's the difference between the two as a percentage of the original. Gives us that times by 100. Gives us 5.4% um, difference. Okay, for me that seems very diff um, very high, so I would say they're not really in agreement. But to get the mark, all you need to do is make a statement, any statement, but back it up with something. You can't get any mark if you just make a statement. You have to back it up with some evidence. So you must do a calculation like this. So I'm going to say um, this is a very high percentage. So they are not in agreement. You could have said it seems okay, so they're in agreement. As long as you've backed it up with a piece of evidence, they're, they're more interested in finding your sentence and linking that to the calculation that you've done. Um, state one safety precaution you would take if you were to carry out the experiment that was formed by the student. Well, this is fairly obvious. They have a laser here, so we need to write down a safety precaution um, which is to do with the laser so do not look into the laser beam or a reflected beam you could have also written something like make sure that you put a sign on the door when you're doing the experiment that a laser is in use or 
wear laser goggles when performing the experiment, um, other things like that. Just one sensible answer is all that's needed. Right, that's the end of question one.